Hey everybody, it's Kirsten. We had some technical difficulties as we were recording the first few slides of the presentation, so I'm hopping in here post-recording to give you the introduction. Hooray! Chaos! So week four of the 30-day challenge. Uh, this week we are going to co cover um, how everything that we've learned so far applies to nail art, and we're going to talk about it in specific ways to the, your nail structure and what that looks like and what that means, uh, how your how those affect your lifestyle and your lifestyle affects your nail structure and the challenge that you're going to face so that you can set some realistic expectations for your own nails. And we are also going to cover some questions and answers from the nail bar. So some of the first things that we want to look at when you're considering nail art and the different types of nail art, you want to look at your nail shape. You want to look at your nail length, your nail curvature. We'll talk more about what that means. And we also want you to consider what season are you in because that affects the, the longevity and the way that you, you approach your nail art and your expectations around it. And then we're also going to give you some tips on where to find inspiration for nail art. So we covered this image before about nail shape in one of the previous weeks. So this vertically long is the most common nail shape that you'll see in nail bloggers. It's the classic, beautiful, um, coveted nail shape. Uh, you'll also see a lot of rounded and um, a lot of inverted triangles. So there, you know, there are a handful of these, and, and we'll talk more about those and how they show up. But you may have a variety of different shapes in on each of your hands. So. Um, like I have one that is a little bit egg-shaped, and I have one that's inverted triangle, and one that's a little bit more rounded. So, you know, just look at your hands, and, and we'll give you some examples of that later. So the next slide, uh, nail curvature, is where the first recording went through. So we will transition over to that and go back to when Anna and I recorded it and all the information we shared there. Thanks. All right, so your nail curvature. So you can see that these are my nails on the left very, very strong C curve. And you can also see that um, our pinkies tend to have more of a curve than our index and especially our thumbs. Um, so those were right before my family was like, mom, you need to cut them. <laughs> and I knew from my lifestyle that they were about to break big time. Uh, so you can see that I have a very, very strong C curve. And if I had let them grow longer, they would actually start to curve into an O which becomes very painful because it starts to really cut in on the sides. And so that's oh, for why. ouch. So for those, um, so my experience in life is very different from somebody who has a very flat C curve. And flat C curves tend to tear more on the side. Yep. Kirsten is very more healing. Corey is almost, my husband is almost. Corey's is very, very flat. Flat, flat, flat. And then you can have some of the, the right, right side, sort of this upward C, where it's I not really, yeah, it's not really like spoon nails where you've got a big scoop, but they're sort of flattish and scooping up just a little bit, and they might get all wavy and a little wonky, and they get really weird as they grow longer, and so um, and you just got to learn how to live with it. Yep. Yep. So I have, I have both flat and uh, a little bit of upward wavy stuff. So some of the hazards of strong C curves, you talked about the O, mm -hmm. you have the higher risk of deep breaks. For some people, they flare out. For me, they actually start to taper tighter um, and it becomes, it can become painful. Uh, it's extremely difficult for me to paint this, get polished into those side edges um, without getting it all over my skin. So that, that's my issue. Um, I tend to have more cleanup. And um, I get, so along the, the I, I wanna poke at it so you can see it. Um, maybe you can do right it here. Off. But on the sides, that's where I get really, really uh, hardened calluses because of the constant pressure of the nail plate pushing into my skin. And especially with gardening and stuff, the more I do, the more those calluses build up. So. That's the body's response to don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Okay. You want to talk about this one? Flat C. This is me. Uh, I have tip wear. Tip wear, tip wear, tip wear, tip wear. And be, as they grow out, because if you see how, so in Anna's, hers are curved down. So the, where it's going to have con, points of contact are different than flat. 
When it's flat, everything is contacted all the time. And that extra contact, you know, is extra stress on your nails. So you're going to have more chipping and peeling. My nail has been backwards. My nail plate. What we've seen is, and I don't know this for sure. This is not a thorough study. But it seems that those of us who have flatter C-curves also tend to have thinner nail plates. And that could be just the way that it's structured. We haven't looked under this under a microscope. Yeah. That's just a guess. Yeah. And well, but like Corey's, his are very flat, but his are about three times as thick as mine. So it's just... And so, and we haven't done a cohesive study between men and women either. Like that could be a whole thing as well. Then with the upward C, and I'll get this too, like on my pointer fingers and my middle fingers, it will hook down on one side of it and then flip up on the other side. Is this one um, here? No, this one isn't. This is one I found. I'm like, oh, those could be my nails. Uh, yeah. And they have even more risk of bending backwards because of that little upward lift. Again, yeah. they're going to have even more tip wear because not only, like if you think of putting your hands in the pocket and your nail is tip bent up, it's going to, it's just going to wear more paint off. Uh, again, yeah. Mine never bend backwards. Uh, I can't say never because when that's a, when they die. When a mattress, when a mattress gets at me, it's like, and if it bends backwards with that C curve, it snaps and it's bloody. <laughs> Always oh, hurts. It hurts. <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple times. Uh, and we've also seen thinner nail plates with the wavies. Mm -hmm. This type of nail, when we get wavy stuff we look better when we have patterns or glitters versus solid color. And that's part of the reason I didn't paint my nails for so long is because when I put a solid color on them, it accentuated the curves and the weirdness. I'm like, and it drove me even more crazy. So we're going to look at a few examples to give you a, a little bit of an idea of the combination of the horizontal vertical nail shape versus the 3D curvature. Right. So this is our lovely Hannah, Hannah Nader on Instagram. Mm -hmm. She has vertically long nails. So again, the classic, beautiful blogger nails. She has a medium C curve. Mm -hmm. So if you compare it to Anna's tighter C curve, she still has a, a solid C curve. It's just not like hers probably don't pinch. So as right. her nails are going to grow out, they're going to grow downward. I don't have any of these photos in here. D, lac lacquered, oh, simp nope. I know it's hard to keep track of them all, right? D, you used to be la t Roaring Tiger, and now I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, but D, she has beautiful, gorgeous nails with a, a C curve, and it's not as strong and tight as Anna's, but her nails grow down. And so, again, we've talked about this before. These types of shape things are, are predisposed in your genetic makeup between your nail plate, your nail bed, and your finger bone. Yep. So you can't change that. You can change the way but you can't change like D can't change the way that hers curve down. You can't change the way that yours curve in. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah won't be able to change curving down as well either. So the way that we adjust it is cosmetically through length and filing and shape and stuff. Yep. And inverted triangle. This is polished pain, patient, lovely Amy. You can see at her nail bed that she has a, a more narrow nail bed and then it comes out a little bit wider. Yeah. We'll compare her to some to our next our next lovely lady in a moment, but you can see that she still has a relatively strong C curve for this mm -hmm. nail shape. And as her nails grow out, they will they will flatten a little bit and they will continue to flare. Yeah. So our next lovely is um, nails by Megan, mm -hmm. and you can see she also has an inverted triangle. It's n more narrow by the nail bed. And hers are also flatter. Her C-curve is, is not nearly as pronounced as Elvis. <laughs> oh, Elvis. <laughs> as, as Elvis. Do you have a C-curve too? Yeah, yeah, not as pronounced as Amy's. Um, and, and you can definitely see it on her ring finger where that one yes. goes out. And if that happens for you, um, Megan hasn't chosen to do this, but uh, you can file that edge. You can just gently file that corner off and then cosmetically from the top view it will look more rectangular symmetrical mm -hmm. and and also it looks like megan's nails are thicker than mine if i were to have a straight square edge like that it would just tear it would be like mm -hmm. yeah done we're over yeah yeah and then these are my nails this is what they look like today it's not the best manicure but this is me trying to preserve my tips because they've been feeling like that so I do have the inverted triangle. Mine are flat to an upward curve. Again, it's not showing up right here. It's when my pointer fingers get long. And you almost don't look inverted here. Here they don't. Um, 
but the one that and this it shows more as they get longer right now even though see this is the trick of the thirds of of i painted a third two thirds of the way down so it looks like i have nails i barely have any free edge left so um Optical illusions. Look at that. A, <laughs> I think I think that's a good point. You should talk about that, or did we? Yeah. Just... So we'll talk about that when we get more into the nail art of how to work with the different shapes and stuff. But for me, because I do have so much peeling, I find that I do better when I have just my tips painted. So whether it's two thirds down, but not all the way down to the base. I don't know if that's just a mental thing or me picking at stuff, or I don't know. I'm able to better keep up with this, and I also am not patient enough to do straight lines. I find that stamping covers a host of stamps. Look at that. It's gorgeous like you intended and you just like you want to slap, slap, slap. And slap, slap, slap. And it's, it's really, it's quick. It's quicker than me doing two coats of solid paint and waiting the appropriate time. I have several dings and squashes under this that the stamping covers up. So I'm like, again, work with yep. your lifestyle. Yep. Um, and so we wanted to compare. So here are my nails last year. Oh, they were so pretty yeah. when they got long. So this is the difference in the way you shape them as well. This gal that we found online, I'm not sure who this is. She also has an inverted triangle and hers are flaring out. And, and getting she flatter. Look at that. They're getting flatter. And she has chosen to let the flare continue where on mine, I rounded my corners because for me, they create such weak spots. Right. Healy's heels. Right. So. Um, broad sideways, our lovely Corey. Oh, hey, friends. This so is his, Corey. Corey, his pointer finger is a good example of a broad sideways. It's a flat, mm -hmm. very, very flat, almost no curvature. You can see a little on his pinky and it's okay. Like we'll all have slightly different fingers from finger to finger on the same hand, different hand, all that stuff. Right. Um, so where Corey's are um, thicker, he doesn't suffer from the peeling quite as much. If you no. have thinner nails and it's, it's a broad sideways with a flat C curve, you're more prone to it. Right. Uh, here's another example of a flat C curve on a broad sideways. And you can see her nails are different shapes. Like the, but this mm -hmm. thumb and you can, hers, is, I like this because it's pronounced. This mm -hmm. is very much shaped by her thumb bone. Right. Right. And that's just, that's just her genetic makeup. And so she's rocking that red and look at that yeah. little accent finger. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, it's like, everyone's different. And, um, this is her other hand. I believe this was the same gal. I think it's somebody different. Is it somebody different? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you can see this one is more rounded. And so the way that we're, we're defining this and look as we looked at a bunch of nails is your nail bed combined with the, sh the way you shape the tip of it. So right. your cuticle line, the shape of your cuticle line, she's got much more square cuticle lines. Yep. Um, and I call it that just because it's really the proximal fold and then that gets all confusing and everybody knows it as the cuticle. So I use cuticle line. Yep. Um, so, yeah. And so she has a little bit of a C curve, but not a whole lot. And you can see it's a little bit different on each of her nails. Mm -hmm. And then sword, we didn't find any found in nature swords, right. but we did find an acrylic version. So you can kind of get an idea of what that would look like. So it mm -hmm. has the broader base around the cuticle line. And then it tapers up and then has that little foot. Yep. So uh, that is sword. Hers, we don't really know what her actual C curve is because she has acrylics. I feel like she's just sort of going to be one of these round, just sort of, because especially because it's her C curve line. I mean, it's, and she, she's heading towards ballerina. I think that's what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not quite, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, and then squares, there weren't a whole lot of squares that we found either. But again, looking at her cuticle line here, very. it's very square. And this right here, so it's square on this side and a little more curved on this side. So, you know, it's just, just look at it. Um, we didn't have a description here. So she's like a flatter C curve. And she um, would look great with very, very square. She so would. She straight across the top, but mm -hmm. she's chosen to round them probably for a little bit easier um, care and so that they don't break as much. Yep. So square corners like to break. Square corners just like to break. They do. Next shape is triangular. Again, this isn't really a found in nature type of thing. And right. these are acrylics, I believe. Yes, they um, are. So if you do these with your natural nails, you are going to have more risk of tearing just because it's not as much surface area on the tip and it can bend more easily, especially if thinner nails. 
and I would kill myself with them. I would stab my eyes out in my sleep and it would be very dangerous. But again, that's a lifestyle thing. Exactly. And a lot of people like to shape them that way. I've found there's been several bloggers who have changed their shape dramatically like this. Mm -hmm. And some of them love it because they find that since the, those corners are gone, that they break less. So it yep. just depends on you. And yep. Your yep. 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 And then almond, again, this is a not really found in nature kind of shape. Right. Um, but it is a very aesthetic, one of the longest, most popular shapes. Like it's like the classic. Exactly. You know, it's like the little black dress type of thing. Of exactly. It's always in fashion. Yep. Uh, and then egg shape, again, th so this is more of a, a shorter version of the almond. Mm -hmm. We didn't find any natural versions, not to say that it doesn't happen, but if you take a look at her pinky, it looks like a cute little egg. I know, um, these are actually her nails. She may have gel on, mm -hmm. but those are her nails and the way they are shaped. And the, so that was the shaping of the tips there. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at some extreme nails to kind of drive these home. If, it, if you get squeamish at this, go ahead and close your eyes for a minute and we'll tell you when we're done. Um, so these are the world record holders. And I'd like you to look at the difference in the curvature and how that changes what they look like as they grow out. Yeah. I don't remember their names. I actually did not look up their names. But I know she's had the world record for a long time. And hers go straight out like a rake. And his go like... Wonky. Isaac Harley. They grow straight for a while and then it's like suddenly they start curling. And mm -hmm. I see a lot of that, like even the African American people have, um, or just any of the, the darker ethnicity can have, have thicker nails, they have different hair. It's Their just keratin. I would be interested to see what the keratin structure is compared to other ethnicities. Exactly. And so they're able to do it because it doesn't break. They don't break the same because they're so thick. Yeah. And so then because they're so thick, then they take on curvatures because they are dry. Talk about curves. Dry. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. Like your hair dries out. Those nails are dry. Yep. Because they're so thick, they don't break. Yep. And then this gal with hers, and you can see how this one twists. Yep. spirals but curve. not all of them do like this pretty much goes straight out so yep. it, it so you're seeing the difference in the thickness of the plate in different areas of the nail matrix which is genetic shaped by the bone shaped by the nail plate like all of these things are working together as they grow out and are pushed out off the nail plate and become free edge and uh, so again those are exaggerated and holy crew <laughs> it's like like, it is except on your nails so imagine the amount of polish Oh, I oh my. can you imagine? We, we talked about this. The, the soak and swipes would not work on these. No. Like, the, I wonder what the process actually is to remove. Like, do, anyway. But you can see her yeah. pinky is doing all like it's, yeah, these are like that. little uh, water slides or something. It's like this one's a straightforward one. And this is, yeah, the to me, this is fascinating. Not something that appeals to me, but I just find it fascinating. It is very fascinating. So, we're going to tie all this back into the shape of your nails also changes during the seasons of your nail growth cycle. Uh, well, the shape doesn't change, but the way that it expresses itself changes on the cycle. Um, mm -hmm. So as it's shorter, you know, like on a year short nails, sure. well, I know for mine, when mine are short, they're at higher risk of peeling because they do not curve down, they do not curve in. They're just like, hey, we're here, and we're vulnerable, peel us back. Yeah. Um, and for me, I have to get to beyond this point at, um, three o'clock in early mm -hmm. spring before yeah. the peeling really will start to decrease. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's then this length, you saw my photo up here. Oh, it was so pretty. I miss them. <laughs> um, oh, look, <laughs> uh, no, for no, me, no, that no. doesn't last very long. Like that is the extent of my summer. That's the fruit on the tree, the end, beginning of the end. So what we wanted, we, we tweaked this a little bit from last week. Um, we added in summer solstice and winter solstice. So I want to give you context for that. So in the earth and the globe and the seasons, summer solstice is actually the longest day of the year. So that marks the beginning of the end of summer. Even though that's when we mark the start of summer, it's all decreasing and declining. And we're already heading back into winter at, once you hit solstice. And then on the inverse, when we get to winter solstice, that marks the beginning of the end of winter. Every day you get a little bit more moving towards the next season. So um, that all applies in all of this. So um, 
what we like to hear, go ahead. That. So yes. like you've got, all right, so we're going to start at winter solstice, which is you're just starting from beginning. That's you've got yep. nothing and we're just going. So yep. when we head into spring, we're starting to get that new growth. And then like you were saying with summer, we're, we've end up with the perfect length that works for us and it's beautiful. And then we start to head into fall and we pat our nails, nail tips longer. And then they're starting to get more wear and tear and they're starting to peel, especially if we've done lots of summer swimming in the water <laughs> um, or some of those kind of summer things. And, um, and so into fall, you're starting to see, up. Oh, I'm breaking some corners or one nail breaks. And then you're like, oh, I'm trying to baby it along. And maybe I, I can't let go of the other ones. And so I leave those a little bit longer. But you know, you know that the beginning of winter is happening. Mm -hmm. and you're just like, okay, usually it is a big break. And you're like, okay, here we go, starting over. And so if you don't prune them back when you're already moving into fall, you're at risk, especially those of you with tighter C-curves, you're at risk of the deeper, more painful breaks. Yeah. And then winter solstice is like, okay, start over, chop them all down. Let's, yeah. you know, it's like, let's put the gloves on, do the mega hydration treatments. Let's just baby these things as we move into spring. Yep. All right. So based on all of that, let's give everybody an overview on how to shape your nails. This is from your article on Nail Care, nail care HQ on how to shape your nails squoval or square, but right. this applies to anything. So walk us through how to uh, aesthetically pleasing shape to our own nail shape. Right. So you can see with all of these lines. So I put the lines there in figure one so that you could see that my index finger has a very wonky cuticle line. that's pretty square, but boy, it's at an angle. And my index finger, my pointer finger, your little mouse is going the wrong place. And then it's fairly, it's fairly symmetrical in, num in number C, letter C. And then B goes almost kind of like D. And then my pinky is very uh, kind of symmetrical too, but like on this one, it's not. So, um, but so the, the key with this was, even though it's aesthetically pleasing to mirror your cuticle line, sometimes we gotta fudge a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if uh, like if we look at finger D. Um, if I was to mirror that cuticle line, it would look really, really weird. So the goal is to get them straight across because that's what people are really kind of paying attention to. That's what you like to look at. We want them to sort of all be symmetrical. So then what we do is we head over into image two and we don't, so you're going to, in image one, you're going to file them the way you think this straight across. And then you're going to flip your hand over and you're going to do these imaginary lines and it's the top line. So let's look at A. So the imaginary line is where you see the, it's hard to describe, but where the free edge starts in those corners. Okay. And so you're drawing an imaginary line like a ruler. Okay. Well then at your free edge, the tip, you want that to match. So file those when you're doing it, file this way, looking at those lines, those imaginary lines, and then you flip your hand back over and it will look right, but it will, at the beginning, it looks very weird until you get used to it. So, and that's how you get them to be symmetrical. Okay, so what do, do you have any tips for those of us who do not have free edges? Mm. I think it still kind of applies. You still, it, it depends on whether you're shaping them curved or whether you're shaping them more square. Um, so I see you analyzing that. I'm looking, I'm trying to think if I can figure out a, I mean, I guess I can still see from mine where, where they are flatter and I know you guys won't be able to see it, but when I look at it head on, I can see that it, it has like a little upside down smile, which would be a frown in mm -hmm. how some people would call that. Mm -hmm. um so i could see how you'd want to file it we'll have to poke at this so maybe yeah. we'll play with some of the other uh glissettes and with short nubbins and see yeah. if we can figure out a method for you so yeah. 
let's take all of this business about nail shape and curvature and tie it into nail art. For you, so, this has been very important to figure out which things work for you. And so you'll talk about that and which things don't. Like I can do all of these and it's fine. because At I any length. Anna can do it at any length, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So but, for me, um, there are certain things. So, and this is what is important about understanding you and your nail structure and how they behave. For me, my nails are always at high risk of peeling. They are also at high risk of chipping and tearing and doing other weird things. So I tend to avoid accessories and bling. Stickers, um, those can, I found that those can actually be too bonded and uh, peel and take, take nail layers with them. Um, anything with paint tends to be okay. And this is another important thing. Test different paints, test different base coats, test different top coats. I found that, and, and this was one of the most interesting. Paint is, acrylic. paint is acrylic type of paint. You're talking about polish, right? Polish. Well, paint and polish, any of it, like whatever you're putting on top of your nails. And I've also found that sometimes it works in some seasons and in other seasons, the same thing doesn't work. Oh, good point. It's very frustrating, but once I realized and recognized that that's what I'm dealing with, I didn't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. What a terrible thing. Mm. Um, but uh, it allowed me to look at it and analyze it and test it with different objectives of what works for me in this season. So right. um, all of these can work for you all of the time if you have nails like Anna. And you know, it's like, just look at them, try them out and figure out what works for you and what season and what doesn't. Right. So we're not going to go into the how-tos of all of this, but if you're looking for ideas, Anna has a whole bunch of boards on Pinterest of different styles and different stuff like that. Great tutorials. We also have a handful of videos where Corey got to learn, and these I found both highly entertaining and very informative because Corey's starting out not knowing anything, so that's always great. And then, of course, Instagram is full of amazing nail bloggers. Oh my gosh, it's a treasure trove, so check that out. Okay, let's move on to some of our Q&As that, that have come up regularly in the group. So this is a handful that kind of clumps around hydration. Should you hydrate with your polish on? Anna, I, the, the 411. I, I am one of these people who don't, and I can't. Now, some people love doing it, but because I'm not good at capping my tips every day and I do get tip wear, I find that then the oil gets in and sort of, and because it, it, even though it kind of glues the layers together at the same time, it pushes the and it breaks the bond with the polish for me. So I do intensive hydrations with naked nails between manicures. But you do apply it daily with your pen with polish. I do. I do. Oh. And actually applying it to the polish and rubbing it into the polish because the polish is not solid. It does have porous little holes. And, and, and it's so a dry. It does polish dries out too, which is why for those why the longer you wear the polish, it sort of seems like the more C curve you get because the polish is drying, and you'll also get these little fine hairline cracks in it, and that's because the polish is drying out. So you can sort of extend your time um, by hydrating your polish as well, and you'll sort of reduce that premature cracking. So, but there are other people absolutely their skin is so dry it's whatever however your nails are but they love doing the hydration it doesn't matter whether you've got polish on or off and for me when my nails are in a state like they're in right now ultra peely i need to do them naked and i can't do overnight hydrations because the extra sweat um pushes my layers apart when my nails are healthier i can do it with polish on and the overnights but right now both my skin and my Nails are just like, oh, we're so whiny. We're so high maintenance. It's a hot house flower. Right. And we're in real summer right now. So yep. obviously the temperatures are more. And like, I can't, if I'm, we talked about this before, I think. But I yeah, we sweat more. Um, I can't do intensive hydrations for very long when it's really hot because then um, it's, I start to sweat through all of that oils. It's funny and weird to say, but you can sweat through the oil. Yep, especially yet sweaty hands like me. Classic. Yeah. Uh, can you hydrate too much? Yeah, there's a level of saturation. Um, so no. hydrate too much in terms of hurting? No. I don't think it really hurts. I think but it's just wasteful. 
it's yeah you're gonna get to a point where it's like well the body's not gonna absorb anymore it's just like if you drink way too much water you're just gonna flush it right back out <laughs> so, yeah your body okay. can absorb so much yep so and, let's go ahead. wait did, how often should you do a mini before Manny? Did we talk oh, about that? Did we, we skip that? Well, we're going to talk about that next. Okay. So in the ultimate nail care routine, so we've gone through this before, uh, and every winter you should start every winter, whatever your, we, your season is, your cycle, it's a great time to just do a, an intensive hydration. Like chalk those babies full of all the oil you can. Even in the fall, as your nails are drying out and getting more brittle, you're going to want to increase the amount of time that you spend in the gloves and hydrating those babies. Right. So right. this is the general step. Intensive. I've talked about this before is like when you first start with hydration treatments and using the oil and everything, you don't realize how much you have lived with dry nails and that's what you're used to. That's what you think is normal. And then once you get used to hydrating them, like there she's hydrating with water well once you get used to how that feels your nails will talk to you you will actually feel that they're getting dry and you'll know <laughs> hello hello oh, yeah. Yeah, man. you'll know that it's time they need a they need the hydration treatment just like in your garden when you see your plants start to wilt in the sun you know you need to water them so your nails are giving similar signals of like hey kind of thirsty over here uh, mm -hmm. So just pay attention to them. Listen to the nail line. Uh, it's going. So after you do your intensive, step two is the Fab Five wrap. Step three, you want to oil two or three, two to six times daily, at least two minimum in the morning and at before bed, um, or whenever you're, you know. And and then once you get bored of your your manicure, you remove it. Excuse me, and then start over again. So in between every manicure is the perfect time to do a mini before Manny. Yeah. yeah. Even and if it's just an hour. Uh, so or even 20 minutes, like I've done that too. Uh -huh. And it's, it's just very helpful. Mm -hmm. Then you wrap them back up in Fab Five and then do it all over again. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is really the core of it. So oil daily, mini before Manny, Fab Five. This should be your regular routine. Like we've said so many times, your nails do not need to breathe. And the Fab Five is really important because remember, nails have three sides. Nails have three sides. Tip you top bottom. Them. Let me show you, you that one. Wrap quick. it around. You got it. Top bottom. Layer base coat and a layer top coat wrapped around the free edge if you've got it. If you've got it. Oh, come on. Here we go. Come back. To that. Nails have three sides. Tip top bottom. Well, so that wrap is really important. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to where we were. Dirt, 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 dirt. Um, all right. So monthly. You're going to want to remove your cuticle from your nail plate. Yeah. Uh, we have videos and articles on that. Mini or mega hydration every three to four weeks, at least once. Mm -hmm. Trim and file your nails to the desired length every three to four weeks. And again, unless you're going to Cotton gloves, um, this is, a, you know, a lot of people talk about this. Um, if you have sensitivity like I'm having right now to all of the things, cotton gloves will work. It, it's breathable. It's a non-irritating fabric. If you have super sweaty hands, that's a good option. Um, just put a little bit of, of cooking oil or olive oil or something in them to add a little bit of oil so it's not just wicking away all of the oil that you're putting on there. And we were talking about the body balm would be a better option than the lotion stick because it has a higher percentage of beeswax. So it's not going to be absorbed by the cotton fibers in the same way that the other stuff is. So again, work with what works for you, like mm -hmm. for real. Um, yeah. Okay. Some of the other questions that came up, shrinkage and polish and top coat. Dealing with shrinkage is interesting. Um, and it, everybody's different because, you know, such wheat is really a, it's a quick dry polish and some people absolutely adore it and never have problems with shrinkage. And then some of us do, and I don't have problems when it's a brand new bottle, but I do when it's a half used bottle because it's gotten a little thicker. And so it, it sort of shrinks as it's drying and, and the solvents are releasing, um, 
So it's kind of, it depends. And I think it's weather as well. So here we get back to seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, the warmer the weather, I think it helps the solvents release faster. And so it's going to pull the polish this way and shrink it. And so and from your free edge. Lisa Carter in the group, she po posted a thread about this the other day of she ended up figuring out through everybody's comments and we troubleshot it of she was taking too long to apply her her top coat oh and so she was a little more generous and and just got it all over the cuticle line and everything like that and did it quicker and then cleaned it up and then she was having mm. less shrinkage interesting yep yeah and it's really important to make sure that you've got that cap at yep. least capping that edge because then it helps kind of anchor it so. And what I found on my nails where they're peeling right now of, I have to be very careful when I'm capping my edge, because if I get too much on the top, it will actually catch and peel it back even more. I'm like, oh, goodness, oh, goodness, oh, goodness. <laughs> so for me, I have to have, keep my top coat thin. So mm -hmm. as I get towards half a bottle, I need to use my nail thinner and thin it out because as soon as it gets thicker and goopier, that's a thicker layer, one thicker layer that's going to peel back. Yeah. Yippee. Yeah. Um, or an okay. organized polish. Uh, not in the fridge. Not in the fridge. It's just a waste of fridge space. It doesn't do anything uh, except make it cold. And then actually you really need it room temperature in order to apply it because if it's cold, it's going to be thicker. You don't want that. Because uh, it'll take longer to dry. And yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Doug Shoon, author of Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, says that's ridiculous. <laughs> And so for the, um, also polishes, uh, unless they, some of them have UV, uh, reactive, non-reactive things so that it, the, your polish doesn't, um, bleach out. Uh, so, but polish the pigments and everything, they're sensitive to light. So if you can store them in drawers, cool, dry space, you know, the typical thing, recommendation, um, I do have some that I store on the wall, but I've stored them on a wall that does not get direct sunlight. So I am open to the fact that I am sacrificing some of the pigments, but I like looking at the rainbow. So, um, but I definitely, I have most of my polishes in drawers. Sorry, mom can't talk to you right now. She's wondering why I haven't talked to her yet. Um, <laughs> Because uh, Kirsten and I have been working for quite a while putting this together. So I'm looking at all of my drawers and the way I store them is I organize them by brand and then I've organized them by the number, the, the product number, the last three digits that are on the product number and I put a little sticker on top and then I also have swatch sticks with that same number so that I can see the color go to my drawer, find it by its number very easily, and that's how I store mine. But And you have the Ikea Alex? What, what are the... Yes, they are the Alex drawers. That seems to be a pretty popular one amongst nail bloggers. Yes. Um, Don't get full transparency. I do not. Not I, everybody does. I get 50% transparency. That's it. So, so half of my nails, even fine. if I soak overnight and do that hydration, I only get 50% transparency. So it just depends on your nails. Mm -hmm. And how frequently you've done it. We've had several of the gals in the group, they've done it the first three or four times and nothing. But then after that, their nails start to get a little more transparency too. So, you know, just how much do your nails need to soak up? Mm -hmm. um, we had a gal, I don't remember her name, who was, had a question about getting her nails to stop breaking. I am recording right now, sweetheart. Do you need something real quick? Yeah, can we go to mom's? Um, no, unless you can be back in 15 minutes. We'll stop and get something to eat on the way. Sorry, guys. Yay, mm -hmm. Friday. Um, she was filing her nails, even with the crystal file, like all of this stuff, and it was still making her nails peel and break. And she was wondering for some, for some insights on what could be going on. And I gave a couple things. So, Anna, what's your – and I didn't have photos. She didn't post photos of it, but – that's um, one of those things I gotta see. Um, so okay. some of the variables is um, people are asking were, were you minutes? polishing with you don't have time. Why? Why will why do you need to be back in fifteen minutes? Yeah. Because we need to leave to the ferry. They're going to visit dad. Dad. Oh, yes, go to visit dad. So we're trying. Are, to is all your stuff ready to go? 
<laughs> it's okay. You got to do the mom thing. Every once in a while. <sighs> so, um, things that I would consider. So someone asked, are you wearing polish? Because polish can add additional strength mm -hmm. when you're filing to help keep those layers together. So that was a good tip. Yeah. Um, right. If they are peeling like that, you might try a hydration treatment before you file to saturate the layers with oil. You could also try putting like super glue on top yeah. or a nail glue to again, do the same thing that the polish does to try and hold those together while you gently file them down. Um, and you know what? Your nails may just be hosed like mine get. And sometimes when I file them, it's just like, oh, well, okay. it's what were you doing four months, four, ago? four to six months ago of what, what's, and, and go back to week three of the things that you control in your greenhouse diet, stress, if you can, um, nutrition, take supplements. The biotin can be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we have a whole article on, that honor wrote on nail care HQ that talks about nail strengtheners and when that would be appropriate, that may be an appropriate thing for you. And to I do. think it's, uh, you know, I, I talk about people think I'm against nail strengtheners and in that article, which was my first very long article of 300 words, 3000 words, sorry. Um, I was like, if you get to the end of it, congratulations, you've won a prize. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, but at the end, I say that nail strengtheners can be very good for people who have very thin nails, can't seem to get that free edge. And what it does is it gives, you've got overly flexible nails. So it's got enough to hold that together and make them less flexible so that you're getting the hardness combined with your own natural flexibility. And so that can help. And so I think, and you've been taking, you've been using a nail strengthener and have found yes. it helpful. It has been helpful. I'm and trying I to find that. So I think for people where I, that article, when I was writing it was because I was seeing so many really popular nail blade bloggers talk, of, they loved certain nail strengtheners, wore them all the time but their nails were continuing to get longer and they were still using the strengthener and it was making them too hard. So, so it's, it's that you want tough nails that's strong and flexible. And you don't, if you don't keep them flexible by oiling the longer that they get, if you keep hardening them, it's, you're more prone to tear. Like you would, if you're bodybuilding without stretching, those muscle fibers can tear. Same with your nail. Balance. Very fine balance. It is. Okay. And then, uh, you know, like you're talking about, it changes from the season. So you've got two seasons you're dealing with. You're dealing with the, se the actual season of the, the of our globe. And mm -hmm. then you're also dealing with this model of what we're talking about, of the season of your own nails. Yep. So. Um, okay, so that's the nail strengtheners. And then one of the gals posted, my nails feel sore, almost bruised when I take polish off. I get this sometimes. Let me give you my guess and I'll let you say what your, your, your thoughts are. My thoughts are when I have that sensation of like, Ooh, it feels weird. And I think this is probably why people are like, you need a nail break. Their nails need to breathe. They're like gasping for air. No, they're gasping for oil. <laughs> like they're so dried out. And then all of a sudden they are exposed to the air. And if your nails are thinner like mine, I guess it could happen with thicker nails too. But my main guess is that they're dehydrated. Well, actually what it is, good guess. Okay. Almost, almost there. Um, what actually, and this is of course my hypothesis, is that you have used a polish as an extra strength. Okay, so the polish is holding your C curve or whatever. Hmm. Um, the polish is holding your nail at this this curve. Okay, then you take it off. You take that polish, that strength, that, that five layers of polish off and your nails relax because they are fluid. They do have liquid and oil in them. And, but so what happens is you've got this, it's being held and you're naturally relaxing. And what that's doing is it's pulling, the nail plate is pulling up on the nail bed. So it's, the nail bed. it's your nail bed that's hurting. And so it, the way to stop it is ignore it for a little while, it will go away or get polish back on it and make your nail go back to that C curve and then that pressure will be taken off. So it's probably somewhat similar to when you have a too tight ponytail uh -huh. and your roots of your hair hurt. So yeah. if you're, okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So I think oil can definitely help with that. It's like, okay, uh, let's get them a little bit more hydrated and then that can take the pressure off as well. Yep. Okay, how to deal with breaks. We have a ton of great articles on how to do this. Mm -hmm. So as you are, it's like what, I broke a nail, when do I repair it? When do I chop it? How do I deal with the painful damage? Well, what season are you in? Because that's really gonna determine it. Like if you have tears and peeling going on in early spring, you're gonna need to deal with it in a different way than in fall. Like if you're in fall, you're, it's time to just chop them off and start over. You need to prune those babies and get them ready for the winter so that they can regenerate and start over. We talked about this, but you sometimes may never get to summer or fall. You may yep. just be pinging back and forth between winter and spring. And that's, you know, that's like if you live in the North Pole or Alaska or somewhere like Chile, very far south, you are closer to the poles of the earth. You have less summer, less winter. The seasons are just shorter. You have a longer winter, shorter summer, and that may just be your lot in life. And so analogy. buy some cute mucklucks, you know, it's like, do like we, it's, and it's so great in, on Instagram, there are a whole bunch of short nail bloggers that look very lovely and they deal with it and they just work with their length of season. Yep. So normalize it we don't all we may not all get this like even hair like your hair has a, a growth cycle and that's when it will start to fall out um so oh, some people have a very long cycle so those are the ones that get their hair down to their knees mine will never get longer than about the middle of my back and it when it gets to that length it starts to look kind of seedy and it's like because it's the hairs are falling out and replacing themselves so work with what you got work yep. with what you got so we have well, and on that little note, yeah, uh, we lose on average a hundred hairs per day, which is why short people don't notice it um, because it's just short, coming out. short, short people, short, I'm hair. short and yeah. <laughs> you've got long hair and right we now. both experience this where we take out our ponytail and we start running our fingers through it's our like, hair and we get a fistful of hair. Well, it's, we're getting the same loss. But it just looks like a ton of hair to us because it's not so out during the day. Yep, for sure. So, yes. Um, articles, right. videos, lots of great information. We have over 100 videos. There's like nine, oh, we're almost to 100 on the blog. So to wrap this whole 30-day challenge up, um, the most important things is know your nails and your seasons. Mm-hmm. Period. We're going to ask you more, I think, in the, in the, the nail bar of like, let's just kind of just show off and what season are you in? And it's okay. And it's okay. So we'll be working on that. So I, I encourage you guys too of, of when you post a nail break photo, talk about what season you think you're in and then we can discuss it and we can help troubleshoot it a lot better that way when we know what season you're in. And then once you know what season you're in, you can adjust your nail art accordingly. And then remember, one of the most important things is just be curious, experiment. Let it be okay if you need to switch things up and try a different style or a different whatever or a different routine or, you know, like we talked about last week, the only constant in life is change. Yes. Um, it's true. It is. And then most importantly, be gentle with yourself when you're in between seasons because, you know, this is this, this analogy of, yes, we have these images right here, but there are all of the in-between phases. And it's like a day-to-day -day basis, 30 days yeah. make up a month. It's like all of these days, like little ticks of minutes, make, make the five minutes, make the, all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be like, you know what? like this too. I mean, I don't know if anybody can see, but my nails are short. I haven't cut them this short in a long, long time, but I'm going to Maui and I don't want to deal with them. Don't, I'm going to be floating in the water, looking at fish and um, remembering how loud fish are because they're constantly <laughs> chewing on coral and you, you think it's quiet. But no, it's screamingly loud, That's but I'm going to be floating in water. And so it's like, I don't want to deal with the peeling and the polish, I know they're going to peel. So what the, but, oh, but I will take my gloves and I will do hydration treatments. Yep. So, and that's a perfect example of doing the best you can with what you've got and enjoying life. Yeah. Enjoy your lives. That's what we want. Need a vacation. Um, vacation. So 
Joy's in the nail bar moving forward. Like if you have ideas, like, I don't know what nail art I should try. You can try the poll feature in the group of what color should I do? And then have everybody vote or, oh you know, God. just talk to us. It's fun. It's what we're there for. And it's, you know, that it's our community. It's our tribe. So yeah. thank you everybody for participating in this challenge. It's been fantastic and insightful and educational. So and, um, it's been really, really great to have, my gosh, we're almost at, we might be at 700. I haven't looked today. We're almost at 700 members in the bar, which is wonderful. So um, stay active there, hang out with us, share your wins and your losses and your new polishes and whatever else is going on. And, and remember, remember to ask. When somebody says, yeah. help me, remember to ask questions. Yep. I know so many of you are so good because we can't solve anybody's problems and we can't support them and help them unless we have a big, vast information about what the heck is going on in your life because yep. it usually comes back to what were you doing four to six months ago? So uh, stay curious, yes. <laughs> stay clever, stay creative. <laughs> and we'll see you in the bar. Yes, we will. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.